We love to talk about music. Arrow.net. A-R-R-O-E.net. All right, let's do it. Let's play it forward. These are real people, real stories, the struggle to play it forward. Episode number 451 is with Tammy Tucky. <laughs> hey there. How are you? Doing good. How are you doing? A long time no talk, five years. <laughs> man, man, I'll tell you what, I, I, I was sitting here looking at all the times that we have shared a conversation. It was October of 2017, our first time. And then we talked about, uh, uh, you'll find me on Main Street, April 3rd, 2018. And then we talked about the, your podcast on October 26, 26th, 2020. So three times, man. Oh my God. That long? I didn't even, I forgot about the 2020. Wasn't that with your students? Yes, it was, and it, and I and I included you in a thing called Pod Crashing, and which which is about other you know other podcasters and stuff like that. And we went really deep into the actual creation of of podcasting and everything like that because you've been such a great activist for it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I I love that. That was so much fun to talk to them, and it sounded like they had fun, and I definitely had fun. So I can't believe it's been that long. Gosh, <laughs> <laughs> goes by way too fast. I mean, even your voice has changed since our first interview. I, th- I think you must have been like three years old the first time I talked to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was probably like because uh, I'm 26 now, so I was probably my it's like 2019 yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness sake. Oh my god. Okay, so you're headed back into the studio, but what I love about the fact that that you're doing this with a, a GoFundMe. Is, is that Kenny Loggins told me, he says, there's no better way to include your fans than to let them participate in the actual financial part of making an album. They'll be able to get a digital copy of the album, but now a physical copy of the album, because that was like, that was probably one of the most asked questions of my last album. Where's the physical album? I want a physical copy. Mm-hmm. So, so I was like, okay, let's add that and a t-shirt and a poster and also a, a thank you. I want to put a thank you inside the actual album itself on the flap the cover album you know um i don't think a lot of people would ever get that chance but wouldn't that be cool to kind of get people involved in it and and so far we're we're almost at the halfway mark which is awesome so i'm I'm really excited well i uh, I love this i love the idea that the artist is participating with those that follow and those that are fans because i mean in in my day of growing up in the 1970s we went to the record store to buy the album and hope to god that they came to town so we could have at least two hours with them on that stage one once again, this is yeah. a full picture now with with fans. Yeah, it, it's 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 very different than it was back then. And and honestly, that the only reason I really was kind of wanting to do the album, I did want to do another album, another cover album. But I was asked for so long, when is the next one? When is the next one? Because mine is a little niche in in what it's about mm-hmm. because it's Walt Disney World theme park songs from the Florida park. Um, but there are so many people that grew up in, in the 70s and 80s with Epcot and the way that that was the new park and it had this sound, this musical sound to it. So they want to hear different spins on, on the songs that they grew up with. And, you know, my generation also grew up with a, a different form of Epcot mm-hmm. and we had Animal Kingdom. So, you know, there are different music stylings that we grew up with, like with Phil Collins and Tarzan, the concert that they had there at Animal Kingdom. So it's it's really interesting to see how things have have changed it's now just you can't just buy the album because people just buy songs now right you know what i mean like i have a list of what songs are more popular than others which is fine but you know what i mean and 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 they'll they'll have the opportunity to buy whatever song they want or have the full album and a physical copy this time (laughs) so now how are you getting permission to be able to do this so I uh, I have to go through Disney to get an approve, approved list of the songs. Wow. They have to clear and make sure the songs, from what I was told, is that they have to have been officially released before I could cover them. So that means that some of the songs I want to do have never been officially released mm-hmm. because they were just like maybe a small 30-second thing in a theme park ride that I want to do that I want to sing but I want to expand it so it's very difficult and sometimes it's hard for them to find where they and if they had been released so I'm working on that right now to get the official approval by Disney they have to approve of the cover like visually what it looks like wow. approve of the name and so it's a process it's a process and I'm just doing it by myself I don't have any help <laughs> <laughs> you got you, you've got fans that are just waiting to help you I, I know. Yes, that's 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 the wonderful thing. You know, financially, it would be really helpful. I'll put in the most of the really hard work <laughs> of singing and making the album happen. 
<laughs> and, and, and I want I want to clear it for listeners. I did say GoFundMe. That's what you did for your first album. This is the Indie Go Go campaign. So um, so that they don't get confused. Where where do they go right away for the to help you out? So they can head to my website at TammyTucky.com. On the front page, there's a trailer for the actual album itself. And at the bottom, it says, uh, click here to donate. If you click that link, it will take you right to Indiegogo to donate, and you will receive a perk for whichever the tiers you get to do. This is different from uh, GoFundMe, where we weren't able to supply, you Mm -hmm. know, like, prizes this time or you know uh, contributions and thank yous to that um so this time it's indiegogo or you could just go to indiegogo.com and type in my name tammy tucky and it will come up as new disney album project well i love the different tiers because you know people like to you know you know they 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 like to participate in the way of you know i'm going to give a little bit more i'm going to give a little bit more and because they're receiving more and more from you Mm-hmm. Yeah, there, there are different tiers. So if somebody wanted to just donate $5, you know, you'll definitely have a thank you um, within the album itself on the first day that the album's out when we post about it. Or if you wanted to do the $100 tier, you'll get a T-shirt um, of the album itself, a poster, a digital copy and physical copy of the new album and a digital copy of my original album. You'll find me on Main Street. And there's a bigger prize where if you wanted to, I think it's, I think it's like a, a five thousand dollars or something. I'll fly in and I'll do a concert in your nice. in your living room if you want me to. <laughs> <laughs> so now, can, can you talk about what songs are featured, or, or is this something that you're going to do trial by error? Well, I have a list of songs I want to do, but I'm still clearing them with Disney, yep, and yep. I don't want to step on any toes. But the, pro- the my process is I'll be able to update people. If they donate to Indiegogo, it allows me to update and collect additional funds after we hit the goal of $10,000. So I'll be updating everybody throughout the entire year, the, ap- the entire process, because we want the album to come out in April 2023 if we hit the goal by July 10th. So um, I'll be able to update everybody about what songs we select what the name of the album is i want to do something where i have everybody decide on a specific song i'll go this or that and anybody who has donated gets to choose so um it's it's actually a really awesome opportunity indiegogo was giving me all these ideas so that's kind of how i'll 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 push it out if we hit that goal by June 10th. I, I love that you're doing this and the reason why is because with my last book uh, Scrambled Eggs, what I did I, I, I got in there and I said look, I'm about ready to write a book, I'm going to share with you the different chapters as this book continues to grow and so what I would do is I would read from each chapter and they would come back just to find out where I was in the book and then when it was finally oh. released it really made them feel like that they, I, I took them on the entire journey that lasted two and a half years Oh my gosh! I, now I want to read your book. You gotta, you gotta send me a link. I'll buy it on Amazon. Well, it, it's it's a weird book in the way. But you're a musician. You're going to understand this. So I, yes. I'm I'm standing in a mall, South Park Mall here in Charlotte, and all of a sudden I get this vision of John Lennon, and I'm going, why would I have this vision of John Lennon in a mall? So I go over to the Mont Blanc store. They just happen to have the John Lennon Mont Blanc, and I'm going, what is going on? Everything is John Lennon right now. So the way that story is written, it's John Lennon. He's still alive. But he has Alzheimer's. But do you know that that connected me to the Glenn Campbell family? And I learned so much about Alzheimer's. We just raised $23,000 here in Charlotte for Alzheimer's. It's because of that one moment of, of, of you know, that I had this feeling. And you know what it's like, Tammy? When you yes. get that feeling, you've got to answer the call. Absolutely. And I'm so glad you did help support Alzheimer's because I used to work in healthcare for about four years. So I was usually in the memory care ward singing to my residents a That's lot, it. especially during COVID. Yep. Um, Cause they were all stuck in their rooms. So I was singing up and down the hallways cause nobody could leave the room. So, and it's very upsetting, you know, to watch it happen in real time. And, um, and I, and I, di- I had no training on it. So I, I really was thrown into the deep end, but you know, I learned and, and you learn how every Everybody's different in how they're handling because there are different stages of it. Obviously, yep. you learned about it. And Glenn Campbell, the family is just wonderful. I saw their documentary about him as well, too. And just amazing, talented man. And I'm I'm glad that there's awareness, more awareness to it. Yeah. Now, will you let's 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 keep it on on, you know, sharing the story and stuff like that. Will you do something like the movie Get Back from the Beatles in the way that while you're recording it, you'll you'll let us see a little bit of that experience inside the Tammy Tucky studio? Oh, I'd love to. Yes, I have cameras and I'd love to kind of record that experience because it was um, it was a 
difficult process to do it. I didn't realize, you know, you you're spending money for, you know, an hour in a really nice recording studio, because again, this is only audio, an audio medium, and you want it to sound the best it can be. Right. So um, I'm not going to be singing this in my basement. I'm going to be going into a recording studio. And, um, and it, it, it takes time, but you know, you you have to be there and ready to go. But of course, I'd love to show people what I've experienced, uh, because now I kind of know what I'm, you know, not that I didn't know what I was doing the last time, but I have more awareness <laughs> of what to expect this time around. So I'd love to do a video about that because I do editorials all the time on yeah. my YouTube channel too. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. What, so let, let's jump into um, those those moments in the studio that you knew you shouldn't have done something, but you did. And I'll give you a good example. I, I was in the <laughs> studio to drop my vocals, and and the people that were there knew me for my radio career and and the high energy commercials that I do, and they wanted to hear that guy for the Charlotte Motor Speedway. And so I went in there and I impersonated one. But you know that when I went in there to sing, I couldn't because I damaged my vocals doing that fake commercial. Oh, no. So, but oh, I gosh. still had to pay for the studio time. Yeah. So I've never had anything like that happen. More so actually afterwards. I think I wasn't really um, happy with how it was edited in where um, there was a lot of auto tuning happening. And I yes. really wish I could have gone back and just because I, I don't want to use auto tune. I'd rather get it done the right yep. way. You know what I mean? As a professional. Um, but that was being added without my knowledge so um uh but you know that's something that i want to control this time and i am going, going to be working with um, a great guy who um has a recording studio and um is a musician himself so he understands where i'm coming from with the music so he'll be able to help me and we'll be able to kind of make sure it's it's clean vocals and and not auto-tune I, that i just i can't stand it yep. <laughs> see and this is the kind of stuff that when people go and they and they donate to your indiegogo this is the realism that you bring to the project that it's not you're just going to go in there and cut an album or lay down some vocal tracks that, that you really do make a connection with those that that make that investment Oh, of course. And I'm, I'm preparing before I get into that studio because, you know, vocally I'm working all week to just prepare to be in the studio for two to three hours just recording one song oh because you, you're going in, you have the funds, and you want to nail it right away. Yeah. And, and how do you protect those vocals? Because, I mean, I can be on the radio uh, for five hours and, and then people go, why aren't you talking right now? And I'm going, we don't talk after a radio show. This thing has to mend <laughs> first. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what it is. It's, it's knowing how to vocally rest also doing warm-ups in the morning yep. warm downs in the evening um knowing your boundaries because sometimes you vocally can't hit that note but that doesn't mean you can't go and and go to a teacher and see if you can learn how to support yourself and hitting those notes and knowing when you you shouldn't push it too hard because i know at some time uh, like before COVID um, when we were, you know, usually the, the phrase is the show must go on. Yep. So even if you're sick, go, 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 go. And that's not, that's not always the right Damaged. thing to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing that I would love to do with other creative minds, especially those that know, know how to use their vocal cords. I would love to get with groups of people that, that these, these offices and stuff and try to teach them how to speak in tune. Because when you're breathing right and you're using your vocals the way you're supposed to, it'll eliminate this vocal frying that is destroying a lot of people's voices. Oh, I'm so glad you mentioned that because I didn't realize I had a vocal fry until I went to my high school choir teacher no. and he, he changed my perception on it forever. He and I did not get along, but he was the reason that I understood, okay, you know what? I have to take this seriously and you have to learn how to talk and pronunciate certain words yep. and make sure that you're, you're, you definitely are supporting every single note and word for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because people speak out of tune left and right. And they often wonder that you, cause you'll hear it all the time. People will go, man, there's just something about that person. I don't like, well, I can tell you why they speak out of tune. And if they were singing, you would let them know. Exactly. Yes, exactly. And that, that always bugs me too. I just go, Oh, I can't stand yes, it. the vocal fry. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll, I'll correct somebody in a heartbeat. And I'll say, did you mean to say it this way? And they'll go, what do you mean? Say it the way you just said it. And I'm going to share with you a better way to say what you just said. Mm -hmm. and, and you know what? And, and that's a good thing because some people don't understand. They can't hear themselves. Right. Whereas you and I, we, if we have to go back and edit, we have to hear our, our, how we sound. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you when I first started my podcast, when I was 14 years old, oh my gosh, I cannot stand to listen to myself <laughs> from years ago. It is, 
it is it is so excruciatingly uh, painful. So uh, again, another reason I just do live interviews now on my YouTube channel <laughs> because I don't want to go back and edit. God forbid if I have so to. So <laughs> true. That's why I call it unplugged and totally uncut. You know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and see, the thing is, is that I always tell people that the reason why you can't hear yourself is because your ears are backstage. Your voice is going this way. Your ears are back here trying to catch up. Exactly. You you put you nailed it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, man. All right. So where can people go to find out more about what your project is doing and more importantly to where they can donate to your campaign? You can head to TammyTucky.com. The trailer's at the top at the and right underneath it is the donate button to Indiegogo. I'm accepting donations till June 10th. Um, if we do hit the goal of $10,000, we'll continue to accept donations throughout the entire process and the project will move forward. Um, you can also go to Indiegogo.com and type in Tammy Tucky in the search bar. And if you'd like to hear some of my interviews with people who I've interviewed in the past and currently, um, you can head to YouTube.com slash Tammy Tucky. I love it, man. You got to keep me up to date on this project, okay? I promise. I promise. And if you're willing to have me back and, and if, if the album goes forward, I will I will, I will. will return. Excellent. <laughs> With well, cookies. I love that. <laughs> well, you have a brilliant weekend, okay? You too. Thank you so much for everything. I appreciate it. 